Hello, I'm Jay LaPlante, Artistic Director of Doc NYC. Today on the Doc NYC Spring Showcase, we have still a Michael J. Fox movie. Today's presentation is sponsored by Apple TV Plus. And we are joined by the filmmaker Davis Guggenheim, an Oscar winner for An Inconvenient Truth, and Michael J. Fox himself, who among his many career achievements was recently bestowed with this year's Gene Herschelt Humanitarian Award from the Academy for his advocacy in the fight against Parkinson's disease. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. So, Michael, I wanted to start with you. Um, you've written four books about your experiences, of which, of course, you were fully the author. Um, but in this film, uh, you're not the author. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what impact that had on your perspective of how your story uh, is told. Well, I, when when uh, Davis came to me and, and, and talked to me about doing the film, or, or basically taking my books and and, and making a, a film representation of them, a film version of them, uh, I was really excited because because I, I I like his films, I love his films, they're great, um, and and I thought that he was uh, a, a perfect person to do that, uh, in that that um, he understood that that it was just. Um, there was nothing fancy to it. it just, just the truth as I saw it, and and I had no other um, agenda. I had no. I, I he, he said to uh, Apple said to me we started talking, but they said we'll we'll set we'll, we'll set up a a system by which you can you can object to certain things and you can have things removed. And I said why would I do that? Why would I do that? I I, I want this guy to make a, a, a Davis Guggenheim movie about 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 my life and and. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's, you can't have any agreements about that. You can't, like, like it, it. It's about my life until I say it isn't, uh, and then and then and then we come up with Plan B. I mean, it's not gonna work that way. I, if I'm gonna let this guy do this, I'm gonna let him do what he does, and and and, and I'm very happy that I did. And the mm. truth is, it's really a shared authorship. You know, Michael's books are so central to this, and his voice and telling the story is throughout the movie, and and then there's a. Third, if you're going to use the word author, which may not be the right word, I, I use storyteller, but sure. Michael Hart, the editor, is is very central to this in terms of how we represent some of these moments in Michael's life where there were no cameras. So some of it's recreation and some of it is using Michael's films. And, and really, Michael Hart was a big part of it. So there are three legs to the storytelling table, I would say, mm -hmm. and starting with start, and the strongest leg being yours. Today you're in big trouble. <laughs> That's a shaky leg. Um, I just thought of something as you were saying this. It's kind of this weird method thing to this. In that, in that, um, uh, it's it's just it's it's just me being me. And so when they're shooting this stuff, they're using the footage of of, of other performances to, to 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 as as the narration. Or to serve the narrative of, of the story, um, like I had to, I had to get into a place where that was real for me, as I shot it originally, as an actor. I had, and then so then, using that to 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 serve as something that's real to the film, it it, it kind of had this through line of truth it, 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 in that it's a it's a film and and and. It's 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 using footage from other films, but it's in, in some weird way, it's it's very real. I don't know how to explain it, but it just struck me as you were saying that. It just just to, to make it clear to people who maybe haven't seen the movie, there's a, there's so many examples, but there's a scene where Michael and is on a date with Tracy, his Tracy Pollan, his wife, his future wife, and they kiss for the first time. And it's as you're watching the movie. It's so romantic and so beautiful, shot by Gordon Willis. Yeah, from Bright Nights, Big City. And 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 you're totally with it, but it's a scene from Bright Lights, Big City where the two of them are on a date, and the audience isn't fooled. It, but it just you go with it, and so. But interesting for me, I'm watching it <laughs> for some minutes, evoking these feelings that I had. First time I was in a situation like that with Tracy, and it, and it just it, it was like weird. It was like. You know, brought back all these feelings because I had to recreate those feelings once in a film, and so it's it's, it's all it's all 
Well, it's, well, a, it's, it's, it's fascinating and it's magical. And I think it's just an ingenious idea uh, for you know, how to replicate archival footage that of course that doesn't, doesn't exist. Um, and you're right, there is this thin, thin layer of us realizing that it's not the truth yet, that sense of, uh, of, our, of uh, how we feel about actors and, and how similar they are to the characters they play at all. There's so many layers there. I just think it's wonderful. How did, how did that idea evolve or, you know, of, of telling that story? How did that all come together? And, and, and did, like, did, I would, did, I would you, even... did you catalog all the films you know, before well, you started cutting? I actually say, I wouldn't say it's not the truth. Um, it's definitely shot from a movie, which is a scripted movie about something else, but it captures a kind of a truth, you know? Sure. And so, you know, maybe better than, you know, if there's a still photograph with cheesy music, maybe it's more real, maybe it feels more real in a way, it, in a strange way. And the, the, to answer your question, Michael Hart, the editor, really you know, just knew all this material, watched everything. There are a lot of um, incredible moments. We knew early on that there be, uh, the central to the, the third act of the movie is Michael having Parkinson's, but not telling anybody. And he's hiding. He's hiding that he has it. And Michael um, and um, several people in our team went and found every shot from Spin City and other movies and your later movies um, from 29. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where you see Michael's hand moving or, or twitching or or him hiding his hand, and that um, and that's another ver it's a completely different than a date with Tracy, but another way of doing it. Um, and it's I guess maybe because like, you know, your life is a movie. Your movie is your life. I mean, he's 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 grown up in front of us, and so maybe that's that's part of why that it works. I don't know. There's another scene where where um where. Um, like in, in, this goes into rec recreations too. It was this guy who, who plays me in certain scenes when we need to, to to show that 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 moment. And so this guy gets out of the car and he's so like me that he he closed the car with his elbow or something. But it, this little it was a Mercedes that I had, and he, he just dealt with it like exactly the way I I did. And I, I watched this. That's really cool. He did that. And then, and then it was in front of this newsstand where I had to be on the cover of every single magazine, of the newsstand, and that just that moment. And because of the way this guy closed the door, that only I would know that that's what he did. Like he, perfect. Um, like that was as real as if you'd taken, if you'd been there that day, and got and got that moment. It couldn't be any more real than what that was. Real to you. Real to me. Yeah. And, and then it cuts. So there's recreation with an actor. And then at the end of the scene, it cuts the, the reverse. And I think it's from Secret of My Success, right? When you have the gray jacket on and the sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if you're just watching it, you wouldn't really know that there's a yeah. two no, different, that's... wildly different sources of material, you know? No, that's what, that's what I, I meant when I was referring to the sense of layers and, and the complexity of that of that in interaction. It's, it's quite fascinating. Um, Davis, who was Michael J. Fox to you before you began this project? I mean, I'll, I'll say really candidly, I, 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 I underestimated you. You know, I, I saw Back to the Future in college. We all went, we thought it was an amazing movie. I saw so many of your movies and I was like, oh, he's a, he's a funny guy. He's uh, clever and, uh, and uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good actor. Uh, but I, I didn't pick up his books, you know, and, and I didn't, you know, I, I didn't think there was more there, to be honest with you. And then, and then I, I read this interview with him in the New York Times for the last book, and um, it's like, oh. And then I read uh, the scene from the book where it's a pretty heartbreaking scene where he's getting ready to go to do a Spike Lee movie and has this terrible fall, and he's by himself. It's all his fault because he didn't want any help. And he's he's broken and shattered your shoulder yeah. you can't reach the phone and it's it's a tragic and heartbreaking scene which i thought was gonna be the movie it was never in the movie but the writing of it is so visceral and, and the storytelling is so good and yet the tone is so um um at times funny and very poignant without any pitying and i was like this is interesting so i, I have to say like i i, I had sort of this sort of 
yeah, he, great guy. But but I didn't realize what a wonderful storyteller he was, and I didn't realize what how really smart you are. I'm not going to say it in front of you. I just said it in front of you. Did I say it in front of you? I don't know. I was, I, I'm behind you all the way. <laughs> but I mean, really smart. And you see it in the movie, like it's just a very sharp wit, a very intelligent. Um, should I say more? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You do make us laugh a lot. I, you know, uh, the the. I think we underestimate people who are funny. I have to say, this is what I learned in this movie. You know, funny is, is often an indication of something someone's super super bright, and we and we sometimes we we think the opposite. The funny is silly or it's throwaway or whatever. No, comedy is incredibly hard. That's that's why I'm not in the business. Why I make documentaries. <laughs> Um, the, the film is very, you know, frank and open about uh, your day to day life, Michael, you know, living with Parkinson's and, you know, we see you uh, walking outside your building and, you know, there's a gesture from a stranger that that um, knocks you off your balance. And there's also the scene that really struck me was the um, after you've had the fall and there's the we see the makeup person working on your eye. Um, what kind of discussions did you have about how to how to represent that and what what you wanted to include? Um, I didn't have any. Um, I just I just brought to set whatever bed with an assortment of scars and bruises I had on that particular day. It was really it was a really difficult time. Um, uh, going back even a couple couple of years previous to to like the events that were in the book, uh, the last book. Um, I broke a lot of stuff. I broke both my humeruses. I broke hand. I broke my face. I broke my oh geez, what else? I broke a lot of stuff. I had my shoulder recreated and rebuilt. And and um and and uh like I just got through it. And 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 it made me and it, and there was stuff that was funny about it. And there was stuff that was not funny about it. But it just was like um. I don't know when the, when 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 we started working on the film, I just realized that there was this great way for me to see it and 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 understand it differently. I, I don't I don't know. It was it was a really tough time, but 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 it, it, it was true that I went to humor every time because that's just where that's where I go to check in. What's funny about this? And the more challenging it is. The, the bigger the laugh is going to be if I can ever get there. Mm. Uh, one of the things that I was also very moved in the film was the the sequence with your father when you told him about your dream and he drove you down to LA from Vancouver in the road trip and I, can you know that, that had such an impact on me as as a viewer. That it, that impact on you at that age has, has that stayed with you through this whole struggle of of the disease and and everything you've gone through. Can you talk about that that impact? I was just thinking about that today. It's funny you should mention it. And and um, that that my dad um, at that moment, like like I was thinking about what surprised me in the film and and what what kind of new information I got from watching the film that that I, that I hadn't registered before. And it was how important that moment was, and and, and Dave did such a nice job of shooting it, um, with it with the the windows of the house, and being on the opposite sides of the house, and and having this back and forth, and they coming together in the middle, and him agreeing to 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 take me to the states and 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 help me meet, meet an agent when he thought it was clearly based on everything in his life that was the stupidest idea he ever heard in his life, but but he he he. he he did. He swore to me, and 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 so much. And I didn't have much long after that. I had really, in the course of my my early story, it was a long time. And series came and series went, and I got poor and I got desperate, and I really needed a job. And then and then I got I got uh, work and became hugely successful beyond what anyone could ever imagine. And my father, I can I can only begin to. Imagine what he thought of it. I mean, it was just uh, from another planet. This level of success and this level of acceptance for something that he didn't understand. And um, so that was, that was a real gift of the film to me. Was was a new perspective on that, and a new and a new look at 
Again, the, the, the absolute sincere truth of the moment. I mean, it's why this was just an interesting filmmaking because it, 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 it always arrives at a very pure, very true representation of the moment. It gets there in a weird way. So you wouldn't bring this up. I remember your books were a lot more about your grandmother yeah. and your mother. And our first interviews, our, our first conversations were about your father well, and, and why he's the last person he was so pragmatic, so why why would he agree to take to let his son go to Hollywood and drive him down to drop out of high school? It makes no sense. Well, it's much more fun and easy to talk with the people who supported you and understood you and were with you all the way. And it was about the guy who you really wanted to impress. Interesting, yeah. And the guy you really wanted to get behind you. And who just, there's no way you could see him ever. I mean, he, he, like, actors were hippies. He was an army guy, and the uh, best thing he wanted to be was the father of a hippie. Uh, and um, and then and then to have the hippie, you know, win was was he can he can get around that, but that's what happened. The hippie won. Davis, can you tell me about how you structured that? Those those building blocks of, of Michael's story and 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 the, the how, how you uh, paced the film that you did before you know we we get to uh, when when Michael was diagnosed. So having his books was made things so much easier. Sometimes you start a documentary and you've got nothing, you know, and you're just shooting and shooting and shooting, and you make the story up as you go. We we took his books. Um, we we made cards out of every scene we liked. We put them in an order, and we always knew we were going to intercut um, the past story with the present story, and that they were going to come together in this crisis moment. You know, the crisis moment in the past story is him telling telling the world he has Parkinson's. So that there's a, that period where he's hiding, and the crisis in the in the in the present story is is really that last scene with Ryan. We weren't sure what that crisis moment was, but it really was this moment with, you know, you know, after so many falls and, and so many trips to the emergency room where, you know, you know, you really start to feel how the sort of like his optimism is being challenged, I would say. Um, but a lot of it's just done in the editing room. You know, I, I think directors sometimes talk about it in a way in which was like, oh, I knew... We're going to do this from the beginning and we have this big idea. A lot of it's just Michael Hart and me and Michael J. Fox just going from scene to scene, editing, going back, shooting, editing. It's very iterative. It's very like, and, and you're kind of letting the story like tell you where it needs to go, really. It's wonderful. Uh, what, uh, the, the film world premiered at Sundance. Uh, is that where you saw it for the first time, Michael? Is that, what was the feeling seeing it in the room with the public for the first time? I'd seen it a couple of times before in various versions, you know, short of a couple of big edits. And, and then um, and then I saw, yeah, that was for some of in front of um, uh, an audience, or behind an audience, where however you, and, 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 you know, so, so gratifying because they, they clearly loved it. And it's always good. It's, it's much better to be up promoting a movie that's great and people love than one that sucks and they don't. Um, so, so that was really great, and also the level to which they related to it and and and, and expressed later that they they, they responded to it um, was just really gratifying. Mm -hmm. because, because because on some level, as much as I say yeah, it's the truth, the truth, and do what you want with it, and you're the director, and I, it, it is my story, and it's my and there are people in it that I love and care about, and 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 I'm I'm I'm, I'm concerned about how they perceive it and how they and how they are perceived. And um and so satisfied in that count, you know. By by the way, my family was portrayed or pre presented. Um, I I felt really good, and uh, they all they all came across great, and in the audience loved the film, and 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 I was really I was really I was really happy for Davis, in in in, in Michael. Man, Davis kicked it he hit it out of park. He really, really nailed it. Tell me about the title, choice of title. So Michael says a lot of great things in this movie, but you chose, uh, you know, his his uh, speaking about not being able to be still until he, you know, until he couldn't. How, how did the title come come to you as as the the sticking sticking title? I actually don't like describing why I 
pick titles for things because I, I it's important. It's not. It's more like I want people to project. I want people to ask the, the question themselves. But it's clearly that word just kept coming up a lot. I see. Mike, Michael says there's a beautiful moment at the end of the movie, um, and there's a lot of. Um, certainly a lot at the beginning of the movie is a lot about his, his need to move and to move fast. And so, so something just kept bringing me back to that word. But why we named it that? And uh, uh, I, I like to keep it a, it, it, I have my own reason, but I, I'm more curious what other people think. I gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, you always got to keep a little mystery in art. Yeah. 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 Great, look forward to all of it. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you to Apple TV Plus. And uh, the movie is still a Michael J. Fox movie. Thank you, Davis. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much.